Hello and welcome to the world of NDE 4.0. My name is Johannes Frana and today is a great day. Because today we finally get to the core of the cyber physical loop, the digital twin. Now, we already talked about the holistic cyber physical loop and I will put a link to the four videos we did about it right here. Now, in the cyber physical loop, we start with getting all the data through the IAOT, using all of that data, converting all of that data into information using semantic interoperability. And then we're getting into and then feeding that information into the digital twin. And the digital twin is really the core element creating yeah, knowledge out of information or creating action out of information. Therefore, the digital twin is really the element which creates value out of the information. And then we are getting into yeah, something to visualize and finally something to create actions. I also did a video about the basics of the digital twin. And we talked about that you can actually create a digital twin of a person, for example, about myself. And what you need, yeah, you need information about that person. You need the financial data about that person. You need uh, the friends they have. You need the health situation and so on and so on. And with that, you can put that into some kind of a data processing. And then you can visualize that or create actions out of it. And that's really what creates value out of it. And that's, we talked about it in that video, which I will put right here. Um, and that, yeah, this is really where the big players in the IT market, like an Amazon, a Google, a Microsoft, an Alibaba, whatever, what they do with the, all the information they have about you. They want to learn more about you so that they can sell you better what they believe you need or what they know you need. And we also did a video about the scary digital twin myth. Now that video, that was a lot of fun for me to record. And I think it contains a lot of misconceptions which are out there on digital twins. So if you haven't watched it up to the moment, watch it now. Now, if I look on Google for digital twins and I just watch the, all the pictures which appear, and it's always the same. It's always pictures like those. It's always a real twin, a physical twin, displayed next to a 3D visualized twin, like the car, like the bridge, and the yeah, 3D uh, version of the bridge, the virtual version of the bridge, and so on and so on. And so looking at all those articles which are around and all those pictures which are around on digital twins, one could assume that a digital twin is nothing else than a fancy 3D visualization. Perhaps where you can take one of the points and drag it out or something like that. But that's way too narrow-minded for real understanding what is a digital twin. This is a part of it, don't get me wrong, and this is really good for marketing purposes. But unfortunately, it leads to the impression for everybody that a 3D, that a digital twin is just a 3D visualization. Now that we know it is not just a 3D visualization, what is a digital twin? Okay. Now, we already talked about that we have all kinds of data sources. And we combine all of those data sources in the IoT and we convert all the data into information using semantic interoperability. And this is exactly the information we need to create a digital twin. We need information, meaning data with semantic interoperability. And we put that data in some kind of a data processing. And finally, we are creating some visualization 
and we create some action. So those are the three core elements of a digital twin. On the one side, the information or the input, which is the information. Then we do some data processing, and then we have an output. Those are the three core elements of a digital twin. Now, one thing I should be mentioning, because for me, that's an important fact. We don't need just information. We need information with reliability information. Because no matter what kind of information we have, we need to know how reliability is that information source. And that's true for NDE data. That is true for financial data. That is true for whatever data I have. If you think about data you get from some place, even if it's financial information, it's not 100% reliable, that information. And therefore, you need to have that reliability information so that within data processing, you can account for data being not 100% reliable. Then we are getting into data processing. Data processing, that can be classical computers, that can be artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, whatever, that can also be quantum computers. And in here, we can have algorithms, we can reconstruction algorithms, we can have a statistical evaluation, we can get into predictions, and for sure, we can also do simulations within the data processing. Then we get into visualization, using dashboards, using graphical visualizations, even using a 3D visualization like we saw in the beginning. And we want to create some actions out of it, either automatically or with a human which causes some action. And you can already see there is, between visualization and action, depending on the automation degree we have within that digital twin and within the system we have, yeah, there will be a different need for the visualization, a different need for the action. And depending on the algorithms we have, on the data processing we have, the wish is always that the digital twin operates in real time, but depending on the algorithms that might be possible or that might be something where you need a little bit longer processing time. So far, so good. Now, there are a couple of different digital twins. What you can do is, for example, you can create a digital twin for an idea so that you have a digital twin which helps you create an idea to make a better idea out of the idea you have to help you with your idea and that's where you can already see yeah a physical twin should have a digital twin but a digital twin does not necessarily have to have a physical twin because at the point of having an idea for something you do not have actually the digital twin of that idea. Then you get into the design phase. First an idea, then you have, you're designing your product. And then you can have a digital twin which supports your design phase. Then we are getting into, okay, now we need to order some raw material for our new product. We are producing the individual components. We can have digital twin supporting that production. We're getting into product operation. And finally, we're getting to an end of life. And for each of those steps during the lifetime of a product, we can have a digital twin supporting it or even multiple digital twins supporting it. So we start with digital twins for the type of a product the product hasn't been created where we do not have a physical twin. And then we are getting into instances of digital twins where, yeah, we have one digital twin for exactly one instant of a physical asset. 
For sure, we can also do an aggregate over multiple instances by, for example, doing a statistical analysis of different instances. Now, the connection between all of those digital twins, that's also called a digital threat. And I will come to that, back to that in a different video. Yeah, you can have actually more than just that one uh, value stream. You can have multiple, yeah, axes of digital twins we can put in there, but that's something for later. Now let's come back to what we already talked about a little bit, the balance between visualization and action. And this really depends on your automation level. If you have a very low automation level and you need to have a human in the loop, which is typically the, the case currently in the design phase. So kind of this situation, we have our cyber physical loop, we have some program supporting us, a digital twin supporting our actions, and then we have a 3D visualization which shows us what we have done, and we can tweak it, and then it goes to the loop again. We're getting to a higher degree of automation, then, yeah, we have the human on the loop, the human watching the loop very closely, looking for that nothing happens to the, within the loop which isn't supposed to be happening and then interacting with the loop if necessary. And once we come to a very high degree of automation, then yeah, then perhaps we have somebody watching from a far distance our loop, perhaps sitting at home watching a dozen systems at all, and then the loop can yeah have kind of an alarm clock saying, oh, there is something where I need a human to solve my issues. And now this brings us back to the start of this video, the visualization, the 3D visualization. Those volumetric visualizations we saw that, which are all over the internet if you put in digital twin. Yeah, such volumetric visualizations, they are really for the design phase and the idea. But we can also have something which I would call information visualization, where we have a dashboard, or you, you can even use something like R or Excel or something like that. But some visualization which displays you the information, the core of that information. And that's not, not necessarily something you can put in a 3D model. So this, I already said it, this is really for the mainly for the beginning, for the idea and the design phase. But those dashboards, they such dashboards you can really use all over the lifetime of your product. And thinking about human in the loop, on the loop, out of the loop, yeah, the 3D volumetric, that's mostly if we really need a huge interaction with the human. But once our digital twins are getting more and more automated. Yeah. Then we need such dashboards, which give us an easy access to the information we have so that we can look at the data and have and automatically grasp what's going on in our situation. Now, I have written this year a paper on the, exactly this topic the industrial internet of things, the digital twin, and also the cyber physical loops and how they all belong together. And you can access that paper for free right here using the QR code or using that link or just searching for the paper. And I guess you will find it interesting. Now, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them here in the comment section. Next time, we will get to a good topic. And I think most of you will like it. Industry 5.0. What the heck is Industry 
from every corner in the internet or in media, you hear about Industry 5.0, Industry 6.0, Industry 7.0. What are they talking about and does it make sense? I even heard about NDE 5.0 and ah, what the heck. We will get into that in the next video. So that will be well, one of the first videos I will do starting next year. As usual, you will find more information in the description. I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope you give a thumbs up. I hope I will see you soon. So, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Thank you and bye.